Hickok 45 here. Maybe 10 rounds is all you need. That's no fun. <laughs> I don't think I agree with that. I think more than 10 rounds is the answer. Yeah, I've had a few more. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, let's go to the red plate. Oh, yeah. Let's shoot some steel. Because that's who made that one. Let's shoot it again. <laughs> let's shoot the metal plate. This thing's accurate. Let's shoot the little red plate. Oh, I just can't miss today. Uh, there's an ugly pumpkin looking at me there. <laughs> ah, fix him. <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know about you, but I think I need more than 10 rounds to have the fun that I like to have. So we still have maybe 10 or so there in that magazine. Oh yes, you saw it. Most of you can read, some of you can't, but uh, for those who can't, this is the M&P 15 Sport 2. Yeah, it's kind of, here we go again. It's kind of funny. Y'all have been asking uh, for a review or for us to get one of these for what, a year or two, however long it's been out. We did the M&P 15 Sport and then this thing came out pretty quickly, I think. And I thought, well, I don't know. We don't need to probably get one of those. It's not that much different. And uh, so we didn't really jump at it. But I actually bought one uh, this time last year. I bought this one <laughs> about this time. Well, it was before the election, actually. You know how that goes? Uh, and I just uh, picked it up. Uh, the local shop that checks in our FFLs, in fact, they had a couple of them there. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy one of those. It was before the election and uh, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, uh, you still have a lot of innocence, right? About elections and politicians and gun rights and all that. So I just picked up another one and they're, they're so inexpensive. You know, it was a part of the reason. And uh, the M&P Sport, the M&P 15 Sport, Sport 2, uh, these, these ARs, are they've been well received now if you've had trouble with one let us know i mean of course there's always a lemon out there uh, but and there's always a sore head who can't be pleased but by and large uh these have been well received and if you have an experience with one that has been uh, negative or you've had some trouble let us know because i don't see much negative about them i mean for this price range they are okay so <laughs> i don't know if that'll help it is a 223 it is a 22 caliber you know we did a video on that illustrating, you know, this, the holes it makes in a, what was it, a pie plate, John, or something like that. And, and then we shot it with this, then we shot it with a 22 long rifle. I mean, what that rifle was called, ba caliber basics or something like that, maybe. But it's pretty interesting if you're not that familiar with firearms. People that know, you know, maybe not. Uh, so what was I saying? I was saying this is the M&P 15 uh, Sport 2. Not a lot of differences. Uh, so I had one and I say I've had it for a year over a year. I thought, you know what? We need to get that thing out I, I had it out for another reason I thought why don't we just do a video with it people have requested it and even though it's not that different from the first one It's a cool rifle and I got it for kind of a specific purpose because it's inexpensive as a kind of a placement rifle I won't go into depth on that, but I didn't want a really expensive rifle But I wanted one I could rely on that I knew it had a good reputation just you know get get the job done and uh i did replace the stock that's a mission first you know i've told you many times i like those so i did replace that but everything else is was what came on it and so i've had it for over a year now and it's probably about last august or sometime july that i bought it and i, I got it sighted in really well and i just kind of put it away and uh and i i today i shot it a little bit before we started messing with it and i hadn't been shooting it recently and so let me take a shot, John, see if the sights are on. And uh, I could not miss the little red plate over there, just standing and shooting. I, I guess they're still on. Yeah. So uh, there you go. It's uh, before I get it too hot, uh, just a reminder on the on the rifle. It's a, uh, and of course it is clear. I, I, you saw me do that. Uh, it's, it's 
yeah, it's not a two thousand dollar gun. It it MSRP is around seven forty fifty long in there, but you can find them for under six hundred all day. Okay, maybe way under six hundred. Just depends. Someone's having a sale or whatever. You know, you get your mil spec stuff by and large, your staked uh, gas block and all that. Uh, you know, it's just your standard kind of a mil spec bolt. And uh, of course, mil spec is open to interpretation, right? And uh, you know, you don't get anything fancy. You just get a good basic AR. It's treated. I think the the first ones originally when they started making these were melanite. I don't know. I think they even had a one and eight twist on the barrel. But then they, after a year or two, they went to a one and nine twist. And I think they changed the treatment. You know, a lot of arguing about that. But it's the same essential. Uh, treatment I believe they treat the inside and outside of the barrel rather than chrome line it I don't think they're chrome lining any you know, of they might be now might have changed I don't think so but some of these treatments if you don't know they're really really effective really good stuff you know the, the chemicals the, you, know, you got nitriding you've got this melanite you got all these things and there's a lot not a lot of difference maybe some of you are more expert in those those uh, those areas you you didn't sleep through chemistry you know in high school uh, and so, you know, people argue, you know, which is better, you know, between chrome line and some of those treatments and all of that. So anyway, anyway, I'm not going through the jungle, I don't think, anytime soon with this. I don't, I don't sweat over it a lot. Uh, get that little joke, sweat jungle. But uh, I, I, I like this rifle, you know. It's a low-end rifle, and, you know, we like to do a lot of uh, as many low-end guns as we can as well. And this is one of those. If you're looking for an AR-15 and you don't want to break the bank, this is one of the choices. And of course, there's lots of them out there because everybody's making AR-15s, of course, and their brothers, right? I guess they still are. You know, over the last year, I think a lot of people dropped out when these black rifles quit selling quite as well after the election. And, uh, but I don't know, now there's pressure on them again. So who knows, it, uh, it may, it may uh, cause some of them uh, to be a little more difficult to find. I, I don't know how that market's going. I haven't seen a big change late yet. Not yet. Now, I know there's a lot of crazy bills uh, been discussed and uh, we've kind of shared that with you, but we'll see how that goes. All right, let's shoot a couple more shots. AR-15, M&P 15, Sport 2. Oh, the other thing I didn't tell you, the basic information, the most basic is the two differences, main differences between this and the original. Uh, this one is the Sport 2, is they put the forward assist on it. A lot of people wanted that. And the dust cover. Let's close it to keep the dust out. Okay, so this has the dust cover and the forward assist. Other than that, there's just not much difference. Okay? All right. The one thing that I should have told you right away, right? Let's put a couple on this target. Keep my ears in tight. And I see a two liter lurking. Yeah, there's another one lurking. <laughs> oh, a jug. <laughs> Let's smoke that pot right there. All right, another two liter. <laughs> Let's go back over there and uh, do a little plate walking. That little one. Oh. I can miss. I did miss with it. I'm going back to the big square one. The again, we appreciate shootsomesteel.com uh, furnishing that. Check them out. All right, I'm gonna put some on it. <laughs> I love shooting steel. Oh, a bowling pin. I love shooting those, too. Woo! All right. Oh, a cinder block. All right. You know what? I don't know how much ammo I have. I've got three, four. There's a cinder block over there, too. I love chewing on cinder blocks. I don't even have to tear them up the first time. I might save that for uh, the next video if I don't fall over all this brass here. Okay, so we're empty. You saw it. All right, so 
you know the I, again I think these have uh, developed a pretty good reputation uh, you see them everywhere they're not all that expensive uh, I think one reason they're popular as I've discussed before is you can find a lot of companies that make ARs on the low end and uh, even less expensively than these uh, but they're more of a, a I don't I don't mean to insult anybody but more of a no name you know a less well-known name okay and they might be better than this one you know it's harder to know uh, if they don't sell that many of them and they're just not as widespread uh, and I think that's one reason like the Rugers and the M&P Smith & Wesson they do so well anybody that makes a low end or high end but if it's a big name uh, a lot of people have gotten an AR for the first time in the last five four two years whatever ten and maybe don't even know uh, don't have a lot of history in the firearms world but they know Smith & Wesson they know Ruger they know those names and they feel like okay it can't be I can't be making too big a mistake uh, they'll probably stand behind it more so than Joe Smith and Sons in Arkansas that make these you know I just made that name up sorry Joe if you're actually real and you have a company making AR-15s but uh, you just don't know who they are maybe and will they stand behind it you don't know anybody has one uh, but it might be a better AR than this you know it's just kind of the way it is and the reality of the world so it comes with the in-bus uh, rear sight you know and the built-in front sight there your gas block uh 16 inch barrel you know kind of an a2 uh flash hider and uh, i'll put a link into the first video on uh well it's not this gun so this is not really a chapter two it's a different gun but not a lot different and of course the most important item that uh, people just don't buy ARs so they don't have this bayonet lug you know i mean it's pretty well you're useless if you don't have a bayonet lug right so it's uh, it's got all that and it comes with these uh, handy dandy magazines actually i don't i think it does come with one too so magpul standard capacity magazine here 30 round okay uh and i've not had any malfunctions with it we might have one today i'll shoot a little bit more oh i know what i was gonna do i was gonna try some of this just to see if it's more super i'll shoot a few of these oh yeah ballistic tip ballistic tip i know what we'll do Remember what I said, 10's enough. <laughs> 10's never enough. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Where's that uh, Lancer magazine? Did I put it in my pocket? No, I dropped it. Oh, forget it. I'll need a I was just shooting that for something different. Uh, uh, I, I really like the mag pulls. They tend to work, you know, always work. But there are some other good magazines, so I like to, to drag them out occasionally my you know, also. Uh, but you know, mag pull. Uh, phenomenal outfit because these things they're not all that expensive and they work and they wear uh, so you know, most people that that shoot much you know, like them it's hard to find somebody that's going to bad mouth the magpul but there are other good magazines out there all right it's just we don't like shooters don't like to take chances with cheap magazines or magazines that don't have an excellent reputation it's like why well, why bother you know okay it's an important part of the firearm all right, now this is really not, as we discovered, enough ammo. It's just 10 rounds, but uh, we'll make do. Ballistic tip. Let's go to the middle one. Let's go to the little one. Okay, this is no fun, I can't miss. I'm gonna try that pumpkin. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, and I don't know if that's the reason it blew that hole in it. Uh, maybe I better try a couple more of those. <laughs> Pumpkins generally don't do that, you know. Uh, that may have just been an aberration, okay. My relatives in Kentucky look up that word. Uh, but that, that must have been an aberration. We'll try it again with some of those. Four more. I mean, I've learned something if it does. Because yeah, I think you can see the other holes I put in it. All right, I'll shoot a little higher. Oh my gosh. I learned something. Ballistic tip. Federal, I love you. It only took us 10 years to figure that out. <laughs> 
Where's that box? Ah. Okay. 55 grain nozzler, ballistic tip. So what in the world do they do? Some of you ballistics experts, you know, we don't really review ammo or else we couldn't get help from Fedder. We don't review this round over that round, which one's better, which one's worse, and all that kind of stuff. We never have. Uh, but what do you do, Federal, that in a soft melon, that, you know, everybody knows the 223 just flies through stuff. You know, you can shoot even, even thin steel. Uh, I've been fooled over my life since 84, 80, yeah, when I bought my first AR, shooting at thin targets. I've told that story, quarter inch you know, metal, just plain metal, and, and thinking I was missing out there. What? I can't believe I'm missing. They go out there and it's got all these little holes drilled in it. You know, 20, 223, 556 is famous for just passing through stuff. Uh, and, uh, and pumpkins included, generally, as you saw and you have seen before here. So I don't know. I'm impressed. I learned something. Learn something every day, don't we? Okay. Well, what the, let's see. Velocity on that is at uh, the muzzle 3240. Maybe that's part of it. That's a little faster than well than this, of course. This is this may not even have the velocity published on it. It's uh, yeah, it's not like hot shot ammo or anything. It's a standard 223, but uh, it's pretty fast. 3240. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something about the tip or the velocity, but. Pumpkins, generally, you don't get big chunks at them like that. You all know that. You've seen us shoot a lot of them, I guess. All right, we'll file that away in the old noggin and uh, keep that on our, on our brain, John. We might want to do that again. Well, I'm not going to shoot a ton more, but uh, I'll have to probably shoot a couple more since I had this out and we haven't taken 35 minutes in this video. Uh, what else about these these things? You, you know, it's just kind of your standard AR, and uh, it gets the job done. This this level, this particular gun, and this grade AR, whoever makes them, if they've got the same basic components. Uh, when we say low end, it doesn't mean it's like some cheap, ready to fall apart firearm. It's it's you know a decent firearm. Uh, but anybody that makes one that, that, that has kind of this setup, it, it's going to be a pretty good AR probably. And uh, this one, you know, seems to be. So I, I like the thing. I don't have to say, I remember liking the other one just fine. It seemed uh, easier to shoot. I haven't put any paint on the front sight. I'm not sure why. I seem to have less trouble seeing the sights for some reason. But i got to shoot a couple more, can I? Got a few more. Yeah, that one's fully loaded. I'm not going to shoot them all probably. Uh, okay. Plus, we got a couple of targets we've not engaged. All right. Like that pot right there. <laughs> uh, I'll shoot that pumpkin again. I'll, I'll try to shoot it up high where it's not been hit. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the holes or not. The, the one looked pretty dramatic, but I think it was just because it was already shot up. And let's go over there. You know what? With uh, the gong now being AR-500, uh, you know, steel, now that it's on steroids, I can shoot a couple times. I don't want to overdo it, but uh, let's try that middle plate. And the burn barrel. How about a couple on it? <laughs> Just to get it heated up a little bit, okay? Oh, man. So, almost down to whatever, five or six rounds. So, it doesn't take long to, uh, to shoot up your ammo if you're having fun and you're enjoying one of these, right? And that's what people who shoot know. I've made that analogy to golf uh, a few times. If, if for every time you hit a golf ball, it destroyed it for some reason, or it, it couldn't be used for another hit. I don't golf, but uh, people would have a lot of golf balls in their bag. They'd, they'd take a ton of them, right, to the, to the golf course. If they saw a sale on golf balls, they might have a thousand golf balls in the basement, you know, or, or two or three thousand. If there's a sale or there's a special, you, you get a better price break if you buy them in volume, as, as happens with most things. So with 
whereas if you went to somebody's house today and they had 5,000 golf balls in their basement, you'd be like, what a weirdo that guy is. Because you, you really don't need 5,000 golf balls. But with ammo, it takes no time at all to have some fun. And I shot probably whatever, 80, 90, 100 rounds, I guess, today. I don't know. Uh, with just in the time you've been here, right? Just in the time you've been watching. So uh, John and I could have been shooting this uh, a fair amount, having fun before the video and maybe some after the video. Maybe since it's dirty, we shoot it some tomorrow uh, before I clean it and might put five, six, seven, a hundred rounds through it without thinking. So for folks who are kind of new to guns, somebody having several thousand rounds of ammo is totally normal, totally normal, okay? So when you hear that in the news, uh, wow, this bird had 43 guns and he had 5,000 rounds of ammo. He's not exactly a terrorist. He's just someone who's involved in the sport like a lot of us are, okay? So, all right, couldn't resist. Had to get on my soapbox there for a little bit. But anyway, fun gun, 10 rounds is not enough. 20 is not enough, 30 is not enough. You know, you have to have extra magazines to have all the fun you want to have, don't you? But the MP sport, uh, in my opinion, and in my experience, put it that way, it's not my, well, it is my opinion, but it's based on my experience, which is, uh, not extensive, but with two of these uh, in video, out of video, not had any trouble, and they just seem to work. And so it is one choice if you're looking for an AR-15 an AR that won't cost you a leg and an arm, as I was trying to say. Uh, yeah, Ruger, there's others, but uh, it's one choice that is worth looking at, okay? The M&P 15 Sport 2, it's called. You see them, gosh, you see them in gun shops. Uh, I've seen them stacked. I know we've been up to Bud's. You have to walk around stacks of these things, seems like, and others, you know, and in other gun shops as well. So uh, it, it's cool that uh, so many of them are made and they, they work. So I don't know any other lies to tell you, so I'm going to sign off and we'll see you probably in another video. Life is good. Hi, welcome to the end of the video. It's nice to have you here. And while you're here, I want to remind you of our friends over at SDI. Go check them out at sdi.edu. You can get certified in gunsmithing and they accept GI Bill and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you've seen on the range are from shootsomesteel.com. So we appreciate them. And also you may have noticed a uh, pistol safe on the uh, uh, shooting table occasionally and that is the Voltec. Uh, you can check them out at voltecsafe.com and what else have we got? We got our website go to hickok45.com and check out that you can find all the links to our social media like the Hickok45 Facebook and the real Hickok45 Instagram uh, also the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel um, uh, you can also check us out on Full 30 don't forget to do that and I guess before I get eaten up by all these mosquitoes, that's all I had to tell you, and I appreciate it.